And joining me now in studio to unpack on the Auditor General's report and statistics today is Fikile Bili, he is a local government consultant. Uh, we will have, we also have Kevin uh, Malham, he's a DA Shadow Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. And in a while we'll also be joined by SPD Skosana, he's a Sanko member, and uh, Narius Moloto, Secretary General for PAC, which is the Pan-Africanist Congress. I'm sure they're stuck in traffic somewhere, so we're hoping they'll join us in a bit. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you I'll, I'll start with you, um, Mr. Billy. The, the AG's um, report says a lot of irregular expenditure that has actually doubled since the past five years. Should we be surprised? And um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? I don't think as South Africans we should be surprised simply because in my space of work I'm into municipalities and uh, I come across very incompetent municipal officials. And then uh, when you raise these questions, you are seen as someone who cannot, you know, take directive or mandate. But the reality is, I always say to municipalities that municipalities are the nearest department to the people. Municipalities are the pride of the people. Now we have to deploy men and women with credibility and qualifications, you know, and expertise. So at the end of the day, I'm not surprised with the outcome simply because of we don't have capacity to serve our people on the ground. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Malham, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, um, Mr. Billy speaks of um, personnel that are not qualified to manage these municipalities. Is there any consequences? I mean, do we see any accountability sure. when we have reports such as these of irregular expenditure and wasteful expenditure doubling for the past five years? I think the starting point needs to be that we must differentiate between irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and unauthorized expenditure. Irregular expenditure is when it hasn't followed the correct process. Fruitless and wasteful expenditure is where money has literally been poured down the drain. It's been spent on something that it shouldn't have been spent on or whatever. And unauthorized is where the council has not approved a budget or there has been overspending on a budget. Now, the problem that we have is that there is a distinct lack of consequences. Uh, the AG identifies this himself in his report. He says the consequence management of municipalities and of government generally is very, very poor. And this is evidenced by, for example, uh, where mayors are found criminally guilty of, of fraud or corruption, and they get promoted to another sphere of government. I can point to two from my own, my own neck of the woods, Buffalo City, that have been uh, criminally charged and, and moved to the National Assembly. And there's just no consequences. The ANC does not hold people accountable for their actions. Absolutely, and that brings me to my next point. I'll, I'll ask Mr. Billy to respond to this. Political appointments, you know, we have people who, like you've alluded to, that who are in those positions but do not, are not competent enough to, um, you know, to, to hold their duties and um, exercise them. How does this affect, you know, the running of municipalities when you have people that are actually competent but because they haven't been appointed politically? Listen, I, I am of the view that for example, we need to differentiate between who is the political head, who is the administrative, uh, administrative head. You find in most instances a municipal manager is been given mandate by a mayor who does not have qualifications. Do you understand that situation? Sorry. And sometimes you find that a chief financial officer is been given mandate by the councillors who have their own interest you know, to loot the resources that were supposed to go to the people. As much as we say who's at fault, who's not at fault, we need to go back to basics as a nation and say, are we going to use municipalities as low-hanging fruits or are we going to use municipality as the pride of the people? You know, I get to work with municipalities. Not all of them are that bad. I can mention municipalities, for example, that has improved drastically like, for instance, the municipality that is under Mr. Fisser and Mr. Emmanuel in the M. Tanjane in the Northern Cape. That municipality is number nine in the country, it's number one in the Northern Cape. They don't have a big budget, do you understand me? And then I can emphasize on other municipalities like the city of Swanee. They might have their political differences and all those things, but at the end of the day, is the most most professional municipality, you know. We come well, across... I think I disagree on that No, one. no, no. <laughs> City of Tswani under uh, Ramakopa is very much efficient. I don't have a problem with politics. I'm not into politics, but I'm a service provider at City of Tswani. 
service providers will never come to you and say, I've been paid three months later, because they've got an automated uh, payment system at City of 20. Yes, right. they are delivering City of 20. We can see the latest development of RDP houses, which was uh, actually designed by a black dude in, in 20. You know, they are rolling out houses that we've never seen in each and every, each, in any province. It only happens in Gauteng. And uh, currently they've got a good bus system, and I've never seen so many potholes in the city of Tswane. So the reality is, let's not go to politics, let's go to deliverance. Okay. They get clean audits, and I think politically they are sober, but going forward I think they can also improve. But going to other provinces that I've seen, you see, if you give power to one person to appoint MECs, municipal managers, CFOs, councillors, then you have killed the people on the ground. We need to go back to basic and say, do you qualify as the municipal manager? Who can we get on board, for example, private companies mm -hmm. that can come on board and screen these people to see that we've got men and women of credibility? Like uh, going back to you, I say the Northern Cape, this municipality has done wonders. It's the only municipality in the Northern Cape that has done very well. So we need to give credit where it's due. But where they don't perform, we should not be biased because, you know, we want to save face. Right. It's so a very important screening process to make sure we have competent people mm. in position. Uh, Mr. Malham, I see you about to jump out of your seat. You're dying no, to no, respond. No, no, I, I just um, think that there's Beattie a couple here. of things here. First of all, there are minimum competencies that are required mm -hmm. of CFOs, heads of supply chain, Section 57 directors and municipal managers. And all of these people have had years and years and years to get those in place. The The document or the, the, the regulations were passed I think in 2010 and they've had at least six years to get those qualifications to get those competencies now what we're seeing is that many of them still do not have competencies after the elections when new councils are appointed and new directors and new municipal managers and so on are appointed there are going to be more people coming in that have got no competencies so I agree with that that there are okay. incompetent people where I disagree is that we can't hold up a, a city like Swane as an example of good governance. City of Tswane went against the National Treasury Directive. They went against the Minister's Directive, the Minister of Finance at the time, Praveen Gordon, who's now again our Minister of Finance. And they went and installed smart meters, a billion rand smart meter project, more than a billion rand, it's nearly two billion rand. That's irregular expenditure. Now you can't hold that up as good ex uh, an example of good governance. In fact, they are identified in today's audit report as being one of the, the, the metros with a problem with good governance. So yes, we've got to have We've got to have competent people, but equally, we've got to have the political will to make sure that those people are doing the right thing and that they are being directed in the right manner. And there I agree that it's not about politics. It's about making sure that people follow the procedures, that what they are doing is in the best interests of of the people on the ground. Absolutely, and those are huge amounts of money you're talking about. Is there, a, I'm just wondering, a general cavalier attitude towards public funds, Mr. Billy? Okay, well, going back on the tender that is talking about of smart meters in City of Swan, I saw it myself. I didn't go for it because I had my doubts. But if City of Swanee did appoint probably more than one company, I think the rollout could have been much better and professional. I don't want to protect them on that one. If the Auditor General found them guilty, then obviously now they have to um, take the beating for that. And but, were there any consequences for that? Um, I would never say yes or no, because at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's all about the political dynamics, you know, who did they favor and all those things. But all I'm saying, going forward, as a country, as a nation, we should stop sitting back and thinking that if we sit back and keep quiet, these people are going to do the right things. We must go out there and tell these councillors, and tell these politicians, and even tell these administrators that you mess up with the budget of the municipality, you're out. Because at the end of the day, you know, you know what pains me most is when I drive in a municipality, you find we still have street kids, we still have child at home families. But the nicest thing about um, uh, government today. You know, I will never criticize ANC government altogether when I know there are people out there who can get credit. There's a mayor in Mpumalanga called Begabantu Mchad. Begabantu means look after the people. That mayor would say to me, Figile, I need money. And I'll ask him, what do you need money for? He will say, I need money to buy, buy training shoes. I need to buy or book a combi. I need to book accommodation. For who? He said, the youth in my municipality in Petra are going to the Comrades Marathon.